People often ask me who my dream guests are. Today, I'm lucky to be sitting across from one of them. He's the songwriting genius behind the Broadway musicals, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, and Falsettos, which is thankfully back on the boards. It brings me infinite joy to say, hello, William Finn. Thank you, Paul. How you doing? Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> good, good enough. Good enough is my answer. Good enough. Good enough. Yeah. Good enough is good, good in this enough. world, right? Well, sometimes. <laughs> we'll see after the election. <laughs> I wasn't going to talk politics, but you immediately went right no. there. Well, that's all I'm thinking about. So uh, I'm a super fan. I just want to warn you of that. So there's going to be love a lot it. of ass kissing. No, I love. Okay. Love. So ass kissing is okay. You can ask his. You're good fine, with that. Fine. Okay. Can we, let's, let's get started with the really exciting news. Forget the election. Falsettos is back. It's back. That's the exciting thing about the fall. In, in a beautiful new production by Lapine. A, yeah. a stunning production. Uh, it's, it's entirely reconceived. Wow. And brilliantly reconceived. Re reconceived how? It's just, I mean, obviously you have a whole new group of talented actors up on that stage. I don't, I don't want to say too much, except there's a, a wonderful set by David Rockwell uh -huh. that Lapine fearlessly has chosen to use. N when he described it to me, I got so sick in the stomach because I thought there's no way you can make this work. Wow. And the fact is he has and that he did it. He's never done it. No one's ever done anything like this. And wow. It's stunningly beautiful and uh, and evocative and all those good things. So do you've seen it. You've, you're sitting and watching previews. I've seen I mean, are it. you watching it? Like, do you are you watching it every day? Are you? Um, I'm, uh, I took off yesterday. Okay. Yeah, I took off the past weekend, but otherwise I've been here. And there's been talk about doing about bringing falsettos back for a while. Long I, I've time. had all sorts of candles lit in different corners, uh -huh. waiting for this moment. So it's finally happened. Was has there been a lot of uh, anticipation for you, or do you or are you sort of able to just sort of say, well, let's see, when it happens, it happens, and I'll be there? No, there, there's been no anticipation, uh, no anxiety for me. Okay, and I, I always figured when we got the right cast, then yeah. w that would be the right time to do it. And it sounds like you did. So we got the right cast. So let's start with Christian Borrow. He he was in elegies. I know, and he, he sang that song about the dogs that I cannot listen to. <laughs> Because it's just, it's so sad, and 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 you know when I lost my dog, hilariously funny, but uh, it's sad it's sad and, and funny. Yes, and uh, Christian loves to talk about um, actually one of his bad reviews he got from that show, but he was actually great in the in the show. Did he get a bad review? Yeah, he he likes to make fun of. Uh, I believe it was John Simon. I mean, John Simon quote. I think John Simon said, "When is he talking about me? When is he going to stop?" <laughs> saying, I, I, he, I've had to listen to his shit for 20 years. He's talking about me, and, I'm, and I talk about John Simon the same way. There you go. But um, he's a ridiculous, ridiculous man. And yeah. It's good that he's no longer reviewing, or else if he is, no one's reading it. Well, I'm glad you're not stopping. Yeah, so Christian, wow, he's, he's really come along, huh? He's, at, he's done well. Look at that career. Well, you know, I can sniff him. <laughs> and what, do you actually remember like him auditioning for? He didn't audition. Okay. I, I had Alison Frazier, yeah. the, the actress Alison Frazier, was one of my original singers in, in, in Trousers. And, and she was also a friend from my hometown, right. three, years, three years younger than I am. And I saw her in a school play when I came back from college, and I said, well, she's got to sing for me. I, I, this girl's special. What I also found out is she's an unbelievable casting director. That whenever she tells me someone's brilliant, okay. someone's always brilliant. And she had invited me to uh, a show that she was in at the York Theater. And there was one guy, I said to her at the end, why didn't the guy who did this come out at, at um, the curtain call? And then I said, oh my God, that was the same guy. Oh, wow. Who, he did two parts, but uh -huh. I couldn't tell. That, and that was Christian Moore. Wow. And, and then I was writing another song with Deborah Abramson, and yep. the great Deborah Abramson. And I said, who should sing this? And she said, well, maybe Christian Borle. I said, oh, I love Christian <laughs> Borle. <laughs> this is before Christian Borle was a person. You know, you know? Um, so we had him sing it, and he was like unbelievably brilliant. And I, I also got to see him in a, uh, like a reading of Little Miss Sunshine. Like he's done a lot yes, of things with yes, you over the yes. years, right? Well, he's just the greatest. And he's the new Marvin. And it's also great that he has a connection with Michael Rupert, you know, from, from Legally Blonde together. Oh. It's kind of a, a, great, uh, a great little puzzle of putting talents together. And Andrew Reynolds, we, we right. was in, you know, we, we did him before he was Mormon in Little Miss Sunshine. And Stephanie J. Block, of course, was in Little yeah. Miss Sunshine. So, yeah. um, 
Where'd you come up with the name Wizard? Where's that? Where, what is that? I think it, it was from Wizard White, the, the um, Supreme Court Justice. Oh, okay. Who Kennedy? I th- was his name Byron? Am I may I may be making this up. Byron White, I think, was his name, and they called him wow. Wizard. And you just like the name Wizard. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, you did in trousers. That was like one, that was one of your first New York shows. You know, I tell my students, I said, you got to have a calling card. Right. And in trousers was my brilliant calling card, and it it was brilliant only because Mary Testa and Alison Fraser were yeah. singing, and and they naturally harmonized. So none of those parts were written out. They naturally harmonized. So Alison Fraser, you knew her from your, you saw her in Natick, uh, Natick. 14 Dwight Ave, Natick, 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 Massachusetts. Yeah. I mean, Alison, Where you grew I, up, right? I, I've known when Al, I've known Alison since both. I've known Alison when she was 17 and Mary. I was commissioned after college to write a show for the University of Rhode Island, and there were professional people there, professional actors and students, and I could choose three professional actors, and I chose two and Mary Testa, and they said, well, she's not a professional actor. I said, oh, yes, she is. <laughs> she's the most professional of the actors. So, so far I learned you should go into casting. Well, because clearly you spot- Well, Allison should go into casting. Uh, Allison should go into casting. My first music directors were first Michael Starobin, mm-hmm. second Ted Sperling, right. third Jason Robert Brown, oh, yeah, and fourth guy. Scott Frankel. Right. So, you know, I sniff. <laughs> I'm, I'm a good sniffer. <laughs> Okay, so Marvin. Obviously, Marvin is his character we love, and, yeah. and he's you. You created this amazing, full storyline for Marvin. I, I, you know, and the thing is, we don't love Marvin. Marvin is a difficult, complicated character, and I had a professor at Williams who said, you know, when you're writing, or don't be afraid to make them right. unpleasant. They're a you know, ugly. They're, they're complicated. Yeah. Um, and I took it to heart, and especially when I was writing. Marvin, I think, make him worse, make him worse. What can I do to make him worse? But that's what people love about what you do, because there's, there's something so human about what you're able to capture in these people. Well, it's what I try for. And, and you know, when, when March the Fall Setters came out, every critic said that I was just throwing words on a paper. When you look at it, it's very, very rigorously written. Uh-huh. The, the, the rhyme, there are internal rhymes all over the place. I mean, it's not... It is not blurting out in in any way, right? But I, I realize that I'm trying to make it sound conversational, mm-hmm. and sometimes I succeed better than than others. But when I succeed, it sounds like they're just blurting out things. You just have to you have to then examine, right. and your ear, I think, hears the internal rhymes. Mm-hmm. Do you things. want to tinker with with like falsettos, like when you see it back well, on Broadway? There, you know, there, there there's very little tinkering done, but there are a few things that I've just over 25 years or however long it's been, every time I see it, I say, well, that should be changed. That's unbearable. Okay. And so those are the things I change. Oh, so there will be little changes. Okay. Yeah. That's fun. That's fun to sort of like. And also, uh, there were, were many differences made from the when the record was on during its run. Right. You know, so there were many changes that no one knows about. Right. And they're going to think I made those changes, but they were, they've been there for... Right. Many years. But writing about Marvin leaving his wife and falling in love with Wizzer and, and dealing with uh, his child and keeping his family together, and then obviously the story keeps going into falsetto land, into a whole different era of, of gay life. But you, you always say you were never writing really about being gay. There's just characters that happen to be going through these things. Mm. But it feels progressive at that time that you were writing well, something. I was writing about, I, I certainly was not writing about my own life, but I was writing about lives I observed and things that I, I, I saw around. Were me. characters, if you really think about it, were they, were they based on people you knew in any way? Some of the events were about people I knew. Okay. But, um, so like, did you know a guy who left his wife? I did. Okay. I, knew, I knew the wife. Oh, interesting. And the wife told me Trina. the story. That was sort of a little bit of an inspiration. Yeah. Huh, okay. She's still in your life? You know, I hadn't seen her for a while, and the first day of of preview, she sent me a a little note, which was so sweet. And and I, you know, yeah, it was lovely. She lives in New Hampshire now. Oh, that's amazing. So Trina turned out okay. Oh, (laughs) she's remarried and very happy. Are you writing new works now still? Are you? Yes. Did you write? Are you still? I've heard about some of your shows that we've 
seen you work on in the past, maybe are still being worked yes, on. Yes, that's true. The royal family. The royal family. I yes. feel like this is this has been like a, a no. Well, we, what happened was we lost the rights. Yeah. Um, and we got them back. So you're like actually working on that right now. We have a reading of it in a week and a half. Cool. Yeah. Wow. How does it feel to have uh, like people like me, like fawning over what you do? You really are like one of the most talented people I know. Like like. Seriously, like I've spent it's, a lot it's of time. It's better than being spit at, I well, think. Yeah. Um, I, I, I love when people like my stuff. Yeah. You know? And, there, and a lot of people do. Some people do. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people do. I think some people do. Some people like it a lot. And I could use more liking it. Uh huh. What are you most proud of? You've, you've, you've written a lot of great, uh, and there have been a lot of uh, reviews of your, of your music too, and I, and I love your, um, your CD where you're singing at Joe's Pub. But, uh, well, Infinite. it's unfortunate when I was singing that. No, my God, it's but great when you sing. It's so, it's so, you're so entertaining to hear about Republicans, your Republican uh, song. Come on, it's classic. It's classic Bill Finn. This, the show that I'm proudest of, and I don't know that this is what I should be talking about with now that Falsettos is opening, is Elegies. Yeah. I think every song in that show is really good. I do too. Really, really, really good. And, uh, that and, was and I knew while I was writing it, I was writing way above my head. Mm. And it was basically it was, it a just, night of songs about people you lost. And different, right? I mean, songs and, about dead people. But these great, but great story songs. And uh, I mean, yeah, I, l I agree. I love Elegies. Can we maybe see Elegies again? Well, someone's supposed to put it on, but we'll talk about that another day. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm excited. Did you, did you threw me a little, little crumb. Maybe I'm going to see it. A bone. You threw I me threw a, bone. a bone. Thank you for that. Now, I just have to tell you, as a super fan, I actually drove by 14 Dwight Ave Natick, Massachusetts. Did because I was in the area, and I thought, oh, my God, I'm in Natick, Massachusetts. I have to figure out what. I'm told that a lot of people do. Is this a thing? Yeah, someone <laughs> who lives still lives there right. told me that people I didn't do that and, and, and sit across the street and just sit across the street and sometimes take pictures. And um, That was your childhood home? Through, yeah, and yeah. you made it a beautiful song, be beautiful. It was sung yeah. by Betty Buckley and Christian Borle originally. Yeah. So that's actually where you grew up. I got to see the house. Up, you did. Little up on that little hill. Yeah. Yeah. So what were you like as a little boy? Adorable. Ador <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> no, I have a feeling I was a little more difficult than I thought I was. But I thought I was really funny. You know, it's funny and smart. Uh huh. Um, my brother. Three years younger than I, really athletic. Okay. M brilliantly athletic. And my sister, 18 months, right between us, um, was a cheerleader. So oh, wow. I was a total anomaly. Oh, wow. I was a total anomaly. <laughs> but um, I came first, so <laughs> no one was saying, what are you, what are you doing? What are you? And I heard you got a guitar at, for, the, for your bar mitzvah, is I that correct? I got a guitar for my bar mitzvah. Right. And I remember that I used to, when I had to write a science paper I once wrote a song and I remember in, in the last day of ninth grade my teacher Mr. Murphy I stood on my, my desk and saying you're nobody till somebody loves you <laughs> and because um, I loved him I, I, I did exit the king when I was in high school oh, wow. I was the king in wow. high school that's heavy um, yeah so I, I had a wonderful wonderful teacher and and he was the speech teacher uh -huh. and taught me how to basically fashion these little six minute things, which turned into songs, you know, eventually. Okay. Yeah. Even though I despised Natick High School, I had wonderful, wonderful teachers there. What was like well, your first great song you wrote? I wrote a song at Williams um, in a show called... Is this the electrocution show? Scrambled eggs. No, no, no that was Sizzle. That what was that called? Uh, Sizzle. Oh, Sizzle, right. Great title. Uh, Char Charlie Rubin, who wrote for Seinfeld, was, wrote the book for that. Wow. So, um, and, and in Scrambled Eggs, I wrote a song called Out of the Question Blues. And I sang it in the show, and that was the first great song I wrote. That was it. That was the one. Easily. Wow. What was the last great song you wrote? Um, something, I, something I, for your reading? I wrote this show for the gay, uh, for the, the CBST, the, the gay temple, the what, a gay synagogue, okay. whatever, for their, they, they went to a new, uh, a new building, and I uh -huh. wrote a song for them that I thought was pretty hotsy-totsy. Huh, okay. 
maybe I'll hear that one day. Maybe I'll possibly, possibly, <laughs> maybe I'll work into something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you went to school, and did you listen to musicals? Did you, did you expose uh, to Broadway? Oh, 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 oh obsessed. Like if I you mean, the Beatles, the Beatles, the Beatles yeah. Joni Mitchell, Paul Simon, and, Broadway and musicals. musicals. <laughs> like basically, what, like, what, that's like, it. What, do you, what do you think if I asked like teenage Bill Finn his favorite musicals? What would he say? What was what were you like really into? Bye Bye Birdie, I loved, okay. and Guys and Dolls, and Jacques Brel. Oh, okay. That's interesting. When I was a senior, I, I, I grew up in Boston. So yeah. when, I, when I was a senior, and I had just gotten into schools, one of which was Williams, and I, 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 I saw a company uh -huh. uh, in Boston, and the end of Sondheim's bio was he went to Williams College where he won the Hutchinson Fellowship in Music Composition. And I thought, well, I don't know where I'm going. Maybe I should go there and see if I can win the Hutchinson Fellowship, which I did. But you were inspired to go to that school because of his bio and because the company of his bio. <laughs> well, no, I, obviously I had applied there, so I was interested yeah. in it. Yeah. But I just I didn't know where I was going to go. Right, I love that. Have you spent time with Sondheim? Like, have you, are you, are you have you been had any friendly moments or like? No. You, oh, never. Okay. No. It's just interesting because you both came from that school. It's you true. both you did end up winning. That same award. I did. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. So yeah, inspired by a bio, but why not? I mean, that's a, that's a great- Inspired by a bio. And, and you pulled it off. And then coming to New York, mm -hmm. what were you like when you like moved to New York and you were- oh, I was petrified. I was really yeah. petrified. Where'd you live? I bunked in for three months with uh, a fellow student from Williams, uh, Stephen Hardy. And then he kicked me out. He said, you can't do this. And so finally I, I had to find a place. And I ended up uh, on the Upper West Side okay. in the studio. Okay, and did, how did you make money when you first moved here? Did I used to do temp typing. Ah, really? And I was, uh, I was a, um, a bartender in an unsuccessful gay bar. <laughs> an unsuccessful, like, like a, an upstart and it didn't work out? It wasn't an upstart, it was just an unfortunate place. <laughs> really? And I didn't help. <laughs> mm. My gifts are not of the bartending type. Yeah, you're not that guy. I'm not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, am I not that guy. People would talk and I'd just roll my eyes. What's your personal life like outside of showbiz? Like, what do you do Like, when you're not working? What do you like to do? I love watching television. Yeah, what are you into? What, what are you binging? My favorite show of all time is Project Runway. <laughs> yeah, me too. Are you watching the new season? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Course. We could talk about that for an hour. Uh-huh. <laughs> that girl, there's no one who's going to beat that girl. Which girl? The oh, that girl. The, the brilliant girl. Who, girl. Yeah, the girl who keeps winning. Yeah. Yeah, her. Yeah. <laughs> there's, no one who <laughs> even there's no one even close. Yeah, she's going to win. Mm -hmm. So Project Runway, you're into that. And, and I love cooking shows and okay. redoing shows. Competition, I like sports. I love the Patriots. I love, you know... The Celtics. You're into sports, okay. Well, I grew up with my brother. The cheerleader and the athlete, the I love it. The cheerleader and the athlete. <laughs> uh, and how's Arthur? Arthur is great. You've been He's together forever, right? We've been together for, I think, 35, 36 That's years. That's amazing. It's, it's amazing. He looks at me with such loathing is all I can tell you. <laughs> it's a beautiful New York romance. He looks at me with, he can't believe this is his <laughs> life. <laughs> Have you ever written him a love song? The closest is I'd Rather Be Sailing. Mm. Beautiful song from A New Brain, which we got to see at Encores. How great was that? It's wonderful. Jonathan Groff, yeah. Oh, man. Was that Indiana Gasteyer? Yeah, yeah. That was a thrilling cast. And how often do you teach? You teach at NYU. I teach, I teach three hours or two and a half hours um, every Wednesday. Oh, wow. It's a weekly master class. Cool. Where I have a ball, and the students have less of a ball, I think. Did you know that you were going to like doing that? Is that something that... Oh, uh, it's something I knew I'd, I'd love yeah. teaching, yeah. Yeah, it's become a big, a big important... And if I weren't a writer, I'd, I'd be a teacher. But also, uh, it's wonderful because I'm, I'm at Barrington Stage. Yeah. I'm head of their musical theater lab. Yeah. And so I can introduce my students first to Pittsfield and then to the world. Right. So th that's, that's really fun to do. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're spreading your genius a little bit. Well, whatever. <laughs> uh, well, I can't wait to see falsettos. You I will mean, love it. I know every word, and I'm going to try not to sing along. Don't, because you'll, you'll, you'll be tripping in places. <laughs> oh, that's right. There's going to be some new stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank it really was Paul. a treat. And everyone needs to see falsettos on Broadway. And uh, it's written by this guy, Tony Winner. 
William or Bill. Can I call you Bill? You can call me uh, whatever you want. Bill Finn. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.